All right, here we are, everybody. I want to welcome everybody to the video, and thank you for coming. And this is how we frame uh, freestanding walls with braces. I'm going to be framing a wall off of this back furring wall. You can see the layout on the floor. What I'm doing right now is I'm I'm cutting clips. I'm going to put clips between the the studs, which will be 14 and three quarters wide, and I'm going to have the one and a half inch flaps, like the uh, shoes, or not the like the tabs on um, on the end of the clip to put in uh, to the in to the gap between the two studs. And that'll be for extra backing for, you know, after I, I slide the drywall uh, through and slip the floater in, I got that, that super, I got that extra strength I can screw into at uh, halfway mark. So I'm going five and 10 foot. This is a 10 foot high wall. Uh, so I'm going to go 10 foot half inch to the track. Okay, that gives me um, uh, the half inch that my 10 foot sheet, when I take my half inch off the floor, it'll match the top of the steel. Okay, Chemtron, this is the Chemtron caulking. Um, it's acoustical sealant. It's, uh, it's, it's, this is a kitchen, like a restaurant, right? So there's a dishwashing pit on the one side and, and then the kitchen on the other. But it's good to put the Chemtron on all interior walls on concrete. It's, just, it's, it's, a, it's a good product. You can see how I stop the bottom track on either side of the pipe. I don't cut a hole in the track or anything like that. I just stop the bottom track on either side of the pipe. And also, on that where that furring wall is in the back, I'm going to uh, slip through a piece of drywall. So I'm coming back three quarters of an inch to the start of the bottom track as well on that side. And I have it pre-marked. Okay, it's three and five eighths, 25 gauge steel. So I, have, I do have a mark three quarters of an inch back from that back wall. And yeah, the Chemtron is can get very messy. So yeah, I just kind of line it up to the line, flip it over. This is the Hilti DX351 uh, powder actuated fastening uh, tool. And I'm using the black concrete pins and the red, uh, green uh, tabs, the shots. I'll go either end on a, this small piece. I'll go either side, like one end to the other. And then we're going to put a pin in every uh, 16 inches, okay? Um, the rule is if it's a full piece of track, go end, middle, end, right? Because the bent, uh, light gauge track can bend in the middle. Uh, if it's heavy gauge, just go end to end. This is, uh, like I was saying, it, this is now the end of the wall, obviously. <laughs> um, once, I get the, once I get this track shot down, guys, uh, you can see the tools that I'm going to need. I got a pin laser. I have a line laser. My impact chalk line. My 351 uh, fasteners uh, I'm using will be the um, the wafer head, like the wafer head uh, light gauge framing screws. I think they're like by half inch or something like that. The, the this stuff is easy. Okay, I'm going to check my centers for my stud layout to both ways to see which way will work, and I don't have to move or header out for that pipe. I've found my direction, so what I do is I basically just come off that outside wall. I came in 16 half, 32 half, 48 half. For the top track, I'm going to cut it the exact same length, but it's going to be tight because I want to go all the way uh, to the steel. And then for my 16s, I'm going to, like you saw just there, I'm measuring back to the first one because the front is lasered in. The, the other side, I might have to trim or adjust, but the, the, the front side will be perfectly uh, level. So I'm going to take my 16 uh, from that back side. You know, it could be, you know, 14 inches or something like that, right? Because my 16s do come off the back wall. Uh, so yeah, my laser's set there. Uh, I'm going to be installing the clips now. Now, I, I, what I'm doing right now is I'm measuring uh, 10 foot, half inch up. I'm going to measure both sides, uh, both studs here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a mark at uh, 10 foot, half inch for the clip. That way I can sit the top track. I've cut a tab the, for the top track to, to sit on top of this clip, which you will see. And this is uh, all by myself. This is a this trick you're gonna see here is a key, um, like and how I can do with this all this stuff by myself really like these walls these ten foot walls like when it's fl uh, floor to deck it's easy, okay, but these freestanding ones are a little more tricky. So there I'm putting a I'm putting a a clip now at five feet. I'm not measuring the five foot. I'm just putting it between the four and six foot uh, knockouts. Okay, so just uh, save you a step there. You don't have to measure the five foot. Just put it between the four and six inch knockouts. And that clip I'm putting in is just an extra clip. So once I drywall, okay, I know that that clip is in there and it's at the five foot mark, and I can hit the floater stud, boom boom, through some steel and give it that extra strength. Okay, this is a little trick. 
But see how I'm using my six foot bench to hold the stud up? That's how I do it. That's pretty much it. I use my benches to hold the studs up. And I screw off both sides. Make sure everything's a square, okay? Um, but I have, I have my laser on the bottom here, and, and my laser is squared right across the front and uh, both sides. All right, so I'm just going to fasten that there. And you, once it's screwed in, it'll generally stay itself, but the, the, having a bench there to, is, is handy to catch it and um, if it does lean in one way or the other, okay? But yeah, you'll see here, I'll just pull my bench up a little tighter, lean my stud up against it. It's not even on it. It's, it's, it's already fastened in, but that bench is there just in case. If you're doing mid-wall mid studs, it's super handy. But yeah, you can see here now I have it. Um, i got to flip this around because it's the other way. I've drawn my centers already, okay? Uh, but yeah. Boom, just like that, dudes, right? Just, just like that. And I'm going to clamp it on the, the clip as tight as I can because I've tried my best to make it uh, perfect. I do have to trim this one, which you will see. But uh, once I had, when I had the laser up and I was installing my clips, I also marked the, the clips where the level line is. But yeah, all you have to do now is is get that end stud tight and square into the top track. Okay, the laser will do the rest. And I'm always clamping uh, these end studs. And make sure when you're here, you're you're lifting that a half inch above the stud. Okay, I'm just eyeballing it, but don't forget to leave the half inch up on this side too, because that's the uh, that's important for when you take your drywall half inch up the wall. It, uh, it will hit the top of the steel, right? Yeah, you see me lift it up there? I lifted it up there as well. That's it. Let me know what you guys think of the color grading. And if you guys ever need to get a hold of me live, paltap.me forward slash construction cronies. The link is in the video description. You guys can video call me anytime. I'll answer it if I'm available and I can help you live. Like, you, all you got to do is, is click the link in the video description and get set up with paltap. It, it's not free, but it's not expensive either, guys. Uh, I will give you the best advice as quick as possible. You guys won't, won't regret it, okay? Uh, if you guys are ever stuck, just give me a call on Paltap. Paltap.me forward slash construction cronies. But yeah, you can see here, it's it, it's wobbly. I will show you how to brace it, but it, it that's fine at this moment, right? We're not worried about that. Uh, everything's already been leveled. We have marks. We're Now what we need to do is I've discovered the, 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 that the front is not level so or plumb or whatever you want to call it, sorry. But um, I'm going to trim a little bit off the track here and uh, I'm going to put it in closer, tighter to the clip. And yeah, I'm just going to make sure it's perfectly uh, level and plumb there. And uh, we're, we're laughing. I also have, a, 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 there's two walls I'm going to show you here. At the end of the video, like closer to the, to the end after this wall, I show you a quick uh, littler wall. It's the, uh, it's the side to the mop sink. It, uh, it, I also show you that. It's a little uh, like a quicker wall. It's just a little wall, but also shows you uh, how to do another free type of freestanding wall. The the bracing is interesting. Like this wall here, um, I'm going to be building a huge bulkhead inside the kitchen after they put the hoods in for the uh, hood exhaust for the kitchen. And it'll tie into the this bulkhead, giving it a bunch of strikes on the front uh, strength on the front there. So, and all this the ceiling in here is at uh, I think nine foot or something like that, nine foot and or eight foot. I can't remember. It's T bar in there, and uh, we're going um, ten foot with our steel. The back wall there is twelve foot. I went twelve foot on the furring wall, but uh, yeah, you can see here I'm checking the laser. There we go. Boom, boom. Get her mint, get her done. <laughs> right? Uh, it's, it's kind of a pain uh, working by yourself, but I mean, if you had a partner, you could just easily, you, you just, you know, you just divide the work up, have one guy on the laser end, one guy on the other end, and work it as a, in a pair. It's great when you have a partner, for sure. And there's no doubt about it. But if you're by yourself, I'm trying to show you that you can do this by yourself, okay? If you guys have any questions about frost walls or basement framing or anything like that, let me say pal tabs it, man. Give me a call. Two screws in the two screws in the top of the clip as well. All right. And then that's the floater stud. We do not screw that in. The drywall will slip through that. 
Okay, and then we t then we tie it in after, and that'll give it a bunch of strength. And that's why I add that clip in the middle, uh, because I want to get a, a couple screws in that too through the drywall uh, to give me that super extra strength. I do that. I also put two screws in the bottom track as well through the through the floater stud through the bottom track of the other wall. You know, through the drywall to the other bottom track. It's super strong. Um, yeah, here I am. I'm just obviously loading it up. Two studs on the end. Every every any wall that ends like this, you have to put two studs at the end okay it's just always 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 you're gonna need two studs on a wall that ends like that okay gives the corner super a uh, lot more strength and uh, yeah you it's just yeah it's cheap to do it the other way you know and even when you do drywall you got to put your line laser back on it and you have to laser your drywall and make sure your steel isn't warping at all or anything like that you uh, as a drywaller too so you see here, I went along, I screw in in the bottoms, I'm squaring them across and screwing off the back sides. I'm putting a screw in everywhere, okay? Uh, the only time I use crimpers is if I can't reach something, okay? And uh, otherwise, I always put a screw in it. And then simple, just go up to the top, same thing, right? We're just screwing it all in. We've checked to make sure everything's level, plumb. And uh, I'm literally squaring everything across. It's really, in, uh, it's an important step, you know, because when you're putting your drywall on, if your studs are out of square, you're going to get bumps and bulges and things like that. And that's just not, that's just, you know, you know, it's just easy enough to, to square it across, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, dudes, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I think, I'm, I think it skips. There's the brace. Okay. You see the pin laser at the top there? Okay. I got my pin laser on the very, very end. It's really hard to see, but it's at the very end of the track. I, it's this, I, you put, you screw in a, a brace on one side and then you pin laser up the end and screw it in where the laser is and screw it in. I'm sorry. I didn't film that actual part, but you get it, right? You get it. Just use your pin laser, pin it up and uh, brace, brace done. Okay. It's super it's going to be strong. Once the drywall's on, it's going to be very, very strong. I'm also tying a bulkhead into the uh, front side of this. It's going to come around across the kitchen where the hoods are and, and go right into there. So you can see here, there's the line laser. I got my braces in already, my clips between the, between the wall. And I, and I mark with the Sharpie the line, okay? Put an X where the wall goes. Here I'm, I'm plumbing it up already with the uh, pin laser. Okay, and what I'm gonna do? I don't know. Do I have it in there yet? Okay, I already have uh, the the 16, the first 16 screwed in, squared off on the bottom, and it's just standing up freely. So I still, again, I have this this first 16 in there. It's already uh, screwed off and squared across. And yeah, if you can, if you were to zoom in, you'd see the the sharpie marks with the X on the side where the track goes. But yeah, and two, if you do have any actual questions, leave them down below in the comments because I do get back to everybody. It's uh, something I do. I spend a lot of time. I check my comments multiple times a day. And um, yeah, I always get back to anyone who has a question. A good, valid question, I always get back to you guys. But uh, no, that's so super cool. I'm really excited about this new partner, PalTap. Um, like I said, the, the 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 link is in the video description. Uh, PalTap.me forward slash construction cronies, guys. It's it's I'm so so excited about it um, because yeah, I can literally help you guys live anytime you want. You can literally be on a job and just you know like see you're stuck somewhere. You don't want to ask your foreman or something like that. Just give me a call, man. Show me where you're at, and I'll help you. I'll help you. I'll walk you through the problem. Super cool. But yeah, and then uh, the slotted track too, I want to mention. It was a delivery error on this job. Uh, and I just said keep, I decided to keep it because I didn't have any time to waste to re do the return. And, um, but you do not need slip track on these floating walls. Okay. And in fact, I do not use the slots to screw it in, the stud in. Okay. I'm screwing it through the actual steel to steel. So the slot track is actually not functioning whatsoever on these floating walls. You want them tight. Okay. I'm not, I'm not putting it in through the slot. Okay. I'm screwing it in through the hard steel. Okay. You do not want that top track to move. So I thought I'd just point that out. Oh, uh, yeah, it was crazy. What a, it was actually a huge delivery muck up, but oh my goodness, we got our figured out. And uh, yeah, this this is actually looking really good. We're going to be uh, insulating, drywalling, taping uh, this one really soon. Uh, the I was just in there today in the electrical, mechanical, plumbing. They're all moving along quite nicely. So um, I got actually another job I'll be starting tomorrow. Uh, I'll be doing layout. So hoping I can go live from that actually and uh, show you guys some actual layout. That'd be super cool. Nice site, nice quiet site, uh, just on the edge of town type thing. So, uh, 
But yeah, you can see my my red line. That's my line laser, guys. I have a, I've measured across the brace, and um, yeah, I'm just attaching the brace there uh, from the other wall. That's a heavy gauge bathroom, right? And then this is the si mop sink sidewall. And it's just simple like that, right? I just, you, you know, plumb it up. Uh, I shot the line laser to the end, and now I'm using the pin laser to get the other, the corner up. I have the actual hard corner, I think, on this uh, pinned up, but this job has been amazing. I, I, this, the, this contractor is great. I think we're going to be partners for a long time, and um, worked, I were at least worked together for a long time, and um, yeah, I see really good things for the future. This is the first contractor we actually really had an upfront agreement with, the film and all that, so guys, big things coming for the future. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, Construction Cronies, hashtag cronies. Here and there it is, boys. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. And, uh, you know, share this video, guys. Share, like, just do all the good stuff, man. Help me out. Help the channel out. I've been doing this for six years now on YouTube. I, I got a lot of videos out there, guys. Check out my playlists. If it's not on there, I don't know who, I don't know what you're looking for. I've, got, I've covered a lot of ISM. Be well, guys. Be safe.